live from the local station, this is Weather Authority Weekday. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Weather Authority Weekday. I'm meteorologist Katie Garner, and the big talker today is the tropics. We're talking about Tropical Storm Aaron. So really what I want you to know is right now, uh, this tropical storm, the intensification is, you know, a little slower than what it's going to be when it becomes a major hurricane by this weekend. We're kind of in that dry, dusty air pattern, but that'll quickly change as it moves over warm waters, warmer than normal. And I want you to know, Aaron's currently embedded in this really favorable thermodynamic environment. You've got sea surface temperatures really a little warmer than average. They're in the upper 80s, by the way, and that's two degrees above where they should be for mid-August. And the warmer than average water combined with high ocean heat, it, 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 uh, provides a deep reservoir of the energy for intensification. Additionally, the upper level conditions are supportive. That wind shear remains low, which is another thing that will help that rapid intensification. And outflow aloft is symmetrical and expanding, which is a classic signature of strengthening tropical cyclones. So we're going to see this thing strengthen pretty quickly into a hurricane. It's going to be the first hurricane of the season here for us. But from a steering perspective, I want to let you know that Aaron's being guided by a strong subtropical ridge to the north. We're going to take a closer look at that in my full forecast. But that ridge is currently well established, keeping Aaron on a west-northwest trajectory for at least the next 72 to 96 hours from what I'm looking at right now. However, I want to mention the long-range track becomes more uncertain due to evolving large-scale features in the mid-latitudes. So we're looking at the uh, mid to upper level mid to upper level trough. It's forecast to deepen over the western Atlantic. And the key forecast question is whether that trough digs far enough south and early enough to erode that western flank of the ridge and create that weakness for Aaron to turn. If the trough arrives later or it's weaker than modeled, the ridge could maintain control for even longer, and that would allow the storm to track further west before making uh, any kind of turn. So really where this thing's going to turn is in question right now, meaning we're going to see rip currents from this storm, absolutely. But I know a lot of you have emailed in, oh my gosh, are we going to get hit? Is this thing going to turn? Well, I'll tell you this much. From what I know right now, rip currents will be an issue either way, but I would be very irresponsible to tell you what uh, is going to happen because it's just too early to tell. So, you know, for Florida and the southeastern United States, the near-term risk does remain low, but again, it's too soon to discount future impacts entirely. Uh, small changes in that steering pattern, like I told you, they could yield large changes in the track outcome. So the bottom line is this. Aaron is over warm water in a low shear environment, and it has several days of favorable conditions ahead, especially as those factors come into play and it starts to rapidly strengthen. Gradual to potentially rapid intensification is likely later this week and the storm could be a hurricane, major hurricane, Sunday likely into Monday. We're going to watch very closely how the ridge and trough pattern evolves as that will be the deciding factor in any impacts for us. But for now, this is a reminder to stay hurricane ready, keep checking trusted forecast updates and avoid making decisions based on any kind of long range social media models. We really encourage against that. I get so tired of people emailing and they're like, I saw this on social media. You see a lot of things on social media. Watch us. We're going to make sure we give you a very accurate forecast. But now we're going to turn to the forecast because, as you can see, per the 5 a.m. advisory, we'll get another advisory at 11 a.m. Uh, this thing is moving west at about 20 miles an hour, winds at about 45 miles an hour, and gusts at about 60 miles an hour out there. These are the water temperatures, and you can see, uh, based on the chart, they are much warmer than they should be. These water temperatures are in the 80s. And again, that's about uh, two to three degrees warmer than where you'd be at this point in August. So that is very favorable to storm development. The warmer the water, the more likely a storm will get strong. So again, that rapid intensification, this is going to play into it. As far as the steering pattern is concerned, this is a big player. So the subtropical ridge to the north is what you're looking at, and that's what's guiding Aaron west-northwest right now. But as you look in the western Atlantic, a trough is forecast to dig southward later this week, and the timing and strength of this will determine whether Aaron curves northwest or keeps heading west. So the steering pattern is going to play a big uh, component in how this storm moves. So we're going to keep all eyes on it for you, of course, but this is the uh, projected traje trajectory. So take a look at the spaghetti plots. I mean, here's the thing. We call these spaghetti plots. They're tropical models, but they look like spaghetti noodles, so that's why we say it. They are all kind of trending in a very similar direction. You've got one or two that kind of oddly move off, but really, right now, the way these are trending, it's got it headed up toward Bermuda. Again, either way, we're set to get rip currents, but certainly we're not banking 
on this to be the actual uh, trajectory. Do you want to talk about another system that has the chance for development down there in the Gulf? This is projected if it develops to make landfall in Mexico by this weekend. It has the potential to become a tropical storm or a tropical depression. But as far as the U.S. Gulf or Florida, no impacts on us whatsoever. So I hope you feel a little more educated on what's tropically happening. I think that in the coming days, we're going to get more answers for sure. But again, that rapid intensification is going to be a big, big deal uh, as we get going in the next few days. So I think Thursday into Friday, this is when uh, Aaron will become a hurricane. Again, the first one in the Atlantic hurricane season. And then really Sunday into Monday is when we'll see it turn into a Cat 3 major hurricane. So that's a look at the tropics. Let's get you your local forecast now because I know it's a you know big day for the kids out there. Just want to quickly hit on the uh, school bus forecast if we can get it to come up here. I just want to show you by 3 o'clock this afternoon, you'll be around 93 degrees. The reason I mention this uh, is because Here's the thing, our feels like temperatures, the humidity is going to push those up into the hundreds. You'll feel anywhere from about 100 to 104, 5 degrees today. Very dangerous with a chance for some afternoon showers and storms to pop up. Everybody won't see these showers and storms, but if you do, they'll be prominent for some of you, not so prominent for others. And uh, you just got to watch out for some of those um you know, lightning strikes and, and wind gusts. And of course, some locally heavy rain could be present within these storms, but we'll be tracking them as a team. So 87 in Jacksonville right now. We've been in the 80s since we came on the air. And yeah, by noon, you're going to feel well into the hundreds. And you can see, you know, really as the kids come home by two, three o'clock, that's where you hit that 104 degree mark. Now I know they've got sporting events and whatnot and so lucky to have good coaches and good parents. You guys are such awesome parents that know how to keep your kid hydrated and keep the electrolytes flowing. But just make sure you do that because that's where it could get dangerous and you don't really see these feels like temps fall until about five or six o'clock tonight so that's a big big deal uh, heat advisories in place until seven o'clock and you can certainly see that some of these showers will start to move in likely just after the lunch hour uh, two three o'clock you're looking at Brunswick St. Mary's into Jacksonville potentially parts of the coast but uh, you certainly got to understand these showers have a mind of their own they can pop up anywhere anytime this particular model run on feature track by six o'clock has these showers moving into green coast springs palatka mcclenny spreading out uh, different areas different times so let's take a look at a beach camera right now i do want to show you that it's just a gorgeous day on the beach and it's a really good day to get out there and enjoy yourself as long as you stay hydrated take the sunscreen and it's not just the water i want to make sure you're drinking electrolytes too it's going to be a really good idea um, to do that so as we continue to get through the forecast here you know really tropically we've talked about that but our beaches look wonderful so if you get out there today just be safe and in that high heat of the day it's not a bad idea to take a break and remember if you do hear thunder anywhere get inside because you're close enough to get struck by lightning and i wrote an article on newsforjacks.com there are five ways you can get struck by lightning go check it out they might surprise you or maybe they won't i don't know but you do you go check it out if you want to all right we'll continue through the forecast now and uh you know just really want to take you back out and show you future track because by the time we get into tonight, I think it's imperative to note, typically these storms and showers start to pop up in that high heat of the day. But even by 8 o'clock tonight, you're likely to still see some of these showers uh, transitioning even after the sun sets. And so, yeah, we're going to be tracking them all for you. Pool planner today, you're going to be in the 90s. I'd go to a big cannonball in a pool between uh, any of those showers and storms popping up. Highs today across Jacksonville, 95 degrees, 90s on the coast. And as we trend up to Georgia, check this out. You're going to be in the mid-90s there as well, low to mid-90s. So 95 today with showers and storms in the afternoon tonight 76 partly cloudy for you and tomorrow 96 degrees so as we look at your hourly temperatures they climb quick 95 by one o'clock a really hot lunch hour and again you feel like you're in the hundreds thanks to that humidity so the next three days mid 90s are the name of the game we see rain chances vastly increase for saturday and sunday and that'll push us down into the low 90s you're not going to feel that difference i mean duh i hate to tell you that but you're just not so then we see rain continuing through tuesday a lot of rain in the afternoons for some of you and it's something we're going to continue to track but our highest priority right now is tropical storm Aaron and getting you the very latest one thing I'm not going to do is hype it I'm not going to scare you I want to make sure that you get all the facts and nothing inflated and that's why I really encourage you to not go by a social media forecast that's ridiculous so tune into newsforjacks.com it was great to be with you today and we'll see you tomorrow See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news.